Hey, welcome back to the homestead. It's been a while, so thanks for tuning in. Got an update for you today on the avocado and subtropical orchard. We've had some amazing growth over there. But before we get over there, we do have some bad news. Let me show you what happened. So right here we've got the tangerine tree or mandarin tree. That's what we call it. Not sure exactly what this is. It came with the house and it is about done. And that's kind of sad. So what happened is when we got here, it was already leaning over and it already had a split and cracked trunk. And so that fully degenerated and killed the tree off with uh, ants and other bugs going in there and making their home. It fi finally finished off this tree. So this tree's done and it had been leaning for a while and no one had ever painted the trunk. So perhaps if I had painted the trunk right away, it may have extended the lifespan of this because painting the trunk is going to protect from the sun and also from any pests trying to penetrate into that bark and trunk and quickening the death of the tree. So kind of sad we lost our tree here. Not really anything I necessarily did wrong. Like I said, perhaps I could have extended the lifespan if I took action right away when we moved in here about three years ago. So just wanted to show that and now we'll move on down to the orchard. So now we're down here in the subtropical orchard and first I'll show you the new before we get into the old. Right here we've got a new Pinkerton avocado planted about two months ago perhaps a little less than that. And it did have a little dying growth for whatever reason up here. So I cut that off and painted the wound. Uh, this one was in the nursery. It was the last Pinkerton. It wasn't looking amazing, but it was okay. So I went ahead and took a chance on it. And I think it's gonna be fine. There is some new growth starting to show here on these tips. And it's already doing better than when we got it. So just getting it some water now. Remember to water your avocados evenly, try to get as much surface area covered. They don't have super deep roots, so they like a, a spread around, you know, where the roots are at the surface. So that's the Pinkerton avocado. That's gonna be a winter avocado or an off-season avocado compared to the Haas, which is a, a spring and summer avocado. So real quick, we'll just check the kumquat here. And this thing's done pretty good. It did have some of those pests, I believe it might've been leaf miners that, that annoyed it when it first got in. You can see the traces on that leaf is white. So the leaf miners do that, but it recovered pretty good. It's getting trunk growth and the canopy's extended out. So this is great. We did have a couple fruits off this. We ate them and they were really good. So kumquats are amazing. Um, definitely should grow one if you can. Now we're gonna take a look at the avocados that are already established and some of them are even beginning to bear fruit. So I'll turn around here and show you. Right here is Fuerte Avocado. And living up to its name, this has pushed aggressive growth. Right here you can see at the tall point, this is fresh growth in the last one to two weeks. This tip's exploded. Uh, probably from, you know, down where my hand is, it's pushed up six inches in a matter of a couple weeks. That's about six feet already there. Another tip exploding here. You can see the dark, fresh growth coming off. So this thing's doing amazing. I believe it does have some fruit. If I go down here, or I might be mistaken. I think of another one that has fruit. And let's see, there's the fruit, bingo bango. So there's your, let's see if we can get it in the picture, in the light, there it is. <laughs> there's a shadow, I can't tell if that's very visible or not. So there's your uh, Fuerte Avocado, it has a green skin. I believe it stays green until harvest it's a pretty smooth skin there's another one 
and they have a different shape than a Haas. Um, I think they get pretty big, but possibly oblong. Um, so this is the Fuerte. It's still just barely staked on. If you can see that string, just barely staked on, just to kind of keep it from flopping over, because it does have a lot of growth, tall growth, and I don't want it flopping over in half. Next, the original Haas avocado. First avocado we planted down here in this avocado slash subtropical orchard slash citrus orchard, all of the above. And this thing's setting fruit like a madman now. So this is the most recent fruit set on it. The last fruit set is about finished. We didn't have a whole lot on the very first fruit set, but this one is now getting stacked with fruit. And this is just amazing. Couldn't be happier here. Look, there's three right here. So this is spectacular. Two more there, another a third. So this has a couple dozen fruit at least. And I recently harvested some of the last crop off. They're ripening on the counter right now. So I don't know that I can show you any more of the first crop. But look, down here is even more. They're everywhere. This thing's going amazing fruit set. And so these take a while to ripen. I don't know uh, if these will be ready maybe end of the summer. I'm not sure, actually. Um, the harvesting things, it can kind of be a trip with avocados. They take a long time. They have a very long hang time in general. A couple down here on the ground. <laughs> and it has dropped a couple that I guess weren't viable, like this. So the tree will do its thing, and if it doesn't want it, it just drops it, which is totally fine. And then to remind you guys, this is the one... Oh, real quick. See, look, this is like a part of a drop, so this will just break off. See that? They just, they just turn a little kind of black drop off. So on the way into, if we can get to it now, this tree's getting so big, but this is the tree that was topped. There it is. So there's the point that was topped. I had painted that. You can see the paint stretched out from growth. Little shoots growing up there. Shoots have come off. So really that's pretty much shaded now. So the initial problem of kind of sunburn due to the lack of canopy top, that's all healed up and finished. This is now on average about six feet tall. Very bushy and kind of a boxy growth because it was topped. Checking out the other Haas avocado, not topped, not boxy growth. This has your typical avocado, especially Haas growth pattern, uneven. You may think this, hey, there's your main shoot going up. Well, yeah, but this one's gonna catch up right here. These don't grow, they don't have an apical dominance, so they're not gonna grow up like a Christmas tree, remember that, they're gonna grow up uneven. So this has a nice little fruit set, being how young this tree is, it's a couple years old. I believe these were both planted, the two Haas were planted in 2020, like winter to spring of 2020. And so look at the beautiful growth, that bronze colored leaf shooting off in the new growth, love to see that. This one's now over six feet tall on that tip. Um, still a pretty good amount of room to the fence and uh, room all around it, so this one should be fine. I can let it go tall. I can size control it, of course. Got a nice strong trunk, and it's not staked. I got this off a of stake a while back, so always get them off a of stake as soon as possible, but not prematurely. That's not gonna work out usually. It'll, it can fold over and get ugly growth. All right, now, I believe I updated you guys that the lemon tree died in a couple videos back, so we do have two new lemons here. We've got a improved Meyer right here and a Eureka over there. And so the Meyer is a little sweeter than the Eureka. And this one had a hard time. I think I didn't give enough water, but it bounced back and it looks really good now. So this is all fresh growth, those bright green leaves. And look that right there, it's starting to shoot more growth. So doing good, didn't probably give enough water in the beginning. So important to water these citrus real well to get them established. There's your Eureka. You can see the same thing happened to this one as the other one. They both lost almost all their leaves. This one's starting to do a little better too now. 
And so this is the classic kind of commercial uh, lemon tart, you know, sour, not as sweet as the uh, Meyer. All right, we'll just, may as well keep going. Citrus, the original lime tree, the Bears Lime cranking production. Just cranking, there's two right there. There's two more over there. There's three right there. There's a huge cluster of small ones just getting set right here. It's everywhere. Blooms taking off, clusters here of small ones. So this thing is thriving. It's about six feet tall. The blossoms smell amazing. And so yeah, this one is on gray water. Those two lemon trees are not. Most of the avocados, uh, all the avocados so far, except that new baby one, are on gray water. Now over to the reed avocado. Loving the growth on this one. Started out of a five gallon pot, which uh, was planted later than those two haas. Both of these haas were 15 gallons, so they had a nice head start. And this was out of a five gallon. It was tiny, it was 16 inches tall. Um, and it's just gone amazing growth. So never be afraid of a five gallon plant. They can always just take off on you. I'm trying to show you now the trunk down here. It has a super low split point, like literally an inch off the ground. You can see that super low split point. And look, it just sent this right here was hardly not even there like six months to a year ago. So it's just gonna send out growth from wherever it wants. So never worry about the shape really. They're just gonna do what they do. This one has kind of a horns, like one up there and one up there, two main kind of branches. And uh, yeah, just doing great. This thing did try to set like one fruit, which I pulled. And again, this is the reed avocado. So this is gonna have a different season than the Haas. So, if you're doing a little backyard orchard like I am, try and get a variety of trees so that you don't just have all your haas at one time or have to do what a lot of people do, which is pick your haas prematurely to try and extend your harvest. So yeah, do your research and look at fall, winter, summer, spring, try and get year round. Um, quick shout out. I wanna give a plug to Greg Alder if you want to do some more research on avocado varieties and growing tips, just Google in Greg Alder avocados. The guy's documented tons of different avocado types, probably all of them. Very good resource. So do some research on there if you're looking to plant some more avocados and uh, if you're looking to branch out from just a typical Haas type avocados. So just wanted to give a plug to him. Great resource. All right, back to some citrus. So. We got this mandarin tree, Satsuma mandarin, which is nice to have being that we lost the other one over there, the uh, mandarin slash tangerine, don't know exactly what it was. And this thing's already setting fruit, so that's pretty cool. It's pretty quick to get that. I could smell the blooms from back here. They just smell amazing, fragrant, amazing. So look at that down here, quite a bit more fruit. So this thing's like at the tallest little stretch there is like four feet. Uh, overall, it's like, yeah, three and a half or so. And everbearing mulberries, dwarf everbearing mulberries. We got one nice crop early spring and it was tasty and now we're getting more. So it's, it really is everbearing. See that? There's your dwarf everbearing mulberry and these taste really, really good. Very sweet, basically no tart at all. You just pop them in your mouth like candy. Just amazing. And these need a little prune because they're up around seven feet. I'm just gonna try and keep them bushy and small. Planted them pretty close to each other, probably be fine. Maybe could have gapped it a little more. But if you get a chance to grow dwarf ever-bearing mulberries, you definitely wanna do that because they are ever-bearing, at least for me putting off multiple crops in one season. So it was, yeah, early spring or mid spring. And now here in summer, late July, getting more out of them. So couldn't be more stoked on that. And that's about it for this orchard. We've got the berry patch going crazy here. The blueberries didn't really do well. They're all kind of dead except one probably gonna redo some blueberries in a different section, so stay tuned for that. 
We've of course got the two strawberry guavas down here. They're not really doing much growth, but they are putting on fruit. And see a little unripe one? I just tasted one that was ripe, like last week. And they're really good, but they have a large seed. So other than the large seed, they're really good. Let me show you what we got here. So the uh, berry patch is basically out of control. You've got blackberries down there in the raspberry area. The blackberries have gone out of control, as have the raspberries. There's some ripe raspberries or ripening raspberries right there. But yeah, the blackberries are supposed to be, this is their zone, but oh my gosh, they've gone crazy. Look at that. Tons of blackberries. So blackberries are gonna be real productive for us, probably for most people, <laughs> from what I hear. <sighs> and just gonna have a little snack for you guys. Rate the flavor, it's pretty ripe. Oh my gosh, I love it. Blackberries have always been one of my favorite berries. Love that tart and sweet, so good. So thanks for stopping by. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you're not already, and we will see you on the next one.